Hello, my children. Welcome to my humble church. I am Father Spirit. Why is it that people seem to be allured to the dark, drawn into the idea of serving an evil overlord, when you're given the choice of serving the greater good or intentionally picking the evil path, most people will oftentimes pick the path of good. I mean, being good makes you feel good about your actions and it makes people around you generally more happy with your actions and, well, it's generally good. Evil can be described by different people in different ways. An objectivist will tell you that specific actions are good and other actions are evil, with varying levels of that action being more evil than others. A relativist will tell you that evil is a concept that is agreed on in a society and can change from one person to the next and one society to the other. But there are a few select people that believe that evil does not exist. It's a nihilistic point of view that nothing really matters and if your evil actions benefit you or make you feel good, then you should go out and about and do them. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you about the Satanic Bible by Anton LaVey. Put down that popcorn. It's time for something bizarre and shocking. Served up from our friends at Something, something Weird, weird video. video. Descend into the bowels of hell with Anton LaVey and members of the Church of Satan as they perform unspeakable rites in this unique film documentary. Take a peek behind the doors of the old black house in San Francisco, where Church of Satan members reveal the naked truth about devil worship. Before I go into the inner workings of the Satanic Bible and the genius of scripture, I think it's more important to talk about the man who wrote it himself. I mean, what kind of life story would bring someone to create a Bible that celebrates the ultimate evil, according to 2.38 billion Christians, 1.8 billion Muslims, and 16.1 million Jews? And various other religions have an evil tempter that fucks over everyone and makes deals with them, so generally a good majority of people believe that there is a devil out there, and that this devil is a bad guy. So... I'm pretty sure even most atheists, if approached by the devil, would probably think to themselves like, damn, this red dude with the horn says he'll give me a handy if I kill a baby with a rock, and, you know, I better probably not do that, and I gotta start rethinking my ideology, or at least up my medication. Satanists, however, will see this red-skinned man with horns, and they'll think of them as a good person, a liberator of an oppressive system. They're bro. I'd like to think that the average Satanist wouldn't kill a baby with a rock, but according to Planned Parenthood statistics, they probably would if the bastard minorly inconvenienced them. Start with Anton LaVey. Anton LaVey, the writer of the Book of Satan, decided that he wanted to create a philosophical memo that supported his ideology, a means to explain why the works of Satan is not really a bad guy or a bad thing that he's doing, but he's actually a liberator of the masses. In April 11, 1930, Howard Stanton LeVay, later changed to Anton LeVay, was born to his father, a Georgian man, Michael Joseph LeVay, and his Ukrainian mother, Gertrude Augusta Nee Colton. Not much is known about LeVay's family or upbringing, but it's documented that they were very supportive of Anton's music career and would often bring him to church to play the church piano along with him being also skilled in the accordion and the abode. And... No, he didn't play the accordion for the church, but I really wish he did, because it'd be very hilarious for the church to be like... He then ran away from home at 16 and left school to join the Clyde Betty Circus and later worked at carnivals. As a carny, he would be a cage boy for the lions, and he was later promoted to playing the Kelopi, which is uh, this thing. I don't, I don't know how this thing plays. Uh, I just hit the buttons here, and it's just a fucking piano on a on a on a wheels. It's just a piano on wheels. This is this is the thing that uh, Katy Perry plays uh, in making my way downtown. Making my way downtown, walking fast, gonna eat some ass. 
And I want you. And I need you. And I want you bad. If I could. Okay, I'm done. So LeVay claimed to see some of his fellow carnies attend something called the body, which is basically someone telling a story, usually involves sex in a comedic manner. I.e. it was a stand-up routine and, you know, uh, they ha then they then these people had the audacity to go from a stand-up routine on Saturday and go to church on Sunday after. I mean, I've never I've never seen a Christian guy go to a stand-up routine, so this this must have been new back in those days. Hmm. I mean, and Tony LeVay is probably like, <laughs> how can you claim to be a man of God and go to a show where a guy makes jokes about sex and then laugh at the sex jokes? <laughs> I'm so fucking smart. Don't you know what? Christians are not allowed to have any fun in life and you're supposed to only prayer and nothing else. No, no, I don't believe in your backwards way, but you should be living in my interpretation of them. Later in life, in 1948, LeVay worked in various bars and lounges, playing instruments and performing gigs where he apparently had an affair with Marilyn Monroe, who he supposedly met at the Mayan Theater, despite the owner of said establishment claiming that she had never worked there a day in her life. And, I mean, if she did work there, I'd probably be bragging that she did get the sweet, in order to get that sweet celebrity clout. Like, could you imagine, like, oh yeah, Marilyn Monroe used to work at this bar, like, 100%, this guy just debunked that immediately and anyways some people even claim that the carney business was a farce as well but there's little to no information regarding that part of his life as a carney and you're gonna realize that there's there's not a lot of good sources on this guy's backstory um but there's a lot of good sources debunking this guy's backstory we do know that he met his wife in 1950 Carol thing and they were married the next year with his daughter, Carla LeVay, being born in 1952. Anton LeVay also avoided the Korean War draft by taking a class in criminology in the College of San Francisco. So, so far, this man has dodged every responsibility he has ever faced. And, I mean, it's fair to claim that you didn't want to go to school or play music at the church on Sundays, but if you live your entire life avoiding every situation that people offer you and only do things out of your own self-interest, you'll probably notice a sharp lack in friendships and companionships, which you can kind of see that affecting this man later in his life. In 1960, LeVay and his wife got divorced after he was caught having a affair with Diane Hegjeri, who stayed with him for 24 years and mothered his second daughter, Zena Galita Schleck, ni LeVay. And now remember this name because she's very important to the rest of the story. Then after LeVay and Diane Hedgery, Hedger, Hedgery divorced, and she sued him for all his assets. So, you know, you cheat on your wife, you, you get with this other girl, you stay with her for 24 years, you get all the money through this whole Church of Satan thing, and then she leaves you and sues you for all your a assets. Uh, moral of the story. Don't cheat on your wife, and don't marry the woman you cheated on your wife with, because she'll probably not be a very good person. During the whole Church of Satan thing, LeVay was considered a local celebrity in San Francisco, and he had various performances that he would be well-known playing for. You know, playing music, he was often very good at music. I heard a couple of his tracks. He's, he, he knows what he's doing when it comes to the musical realm. And he's also done live performances as well as getting into little weird antics. You know, this guy's a carny. This guy's a musician. His whole thing is standing on a stage and doing things, you know. And LeVay even drove around in a courier's van. And apparently he had a black pet leopard named Zoltan. Honestly, LeVay sounds, LeVay sounds like a fucking trip. And he walk around the streets of San Francisco with this, with this pet leopard named Zoltan. And there's no pictures of the leopard, sadly. I wanted one, so here's here's a leopard I drew for you guys. And here's LeVay walking him. It seemed that LeVay was finally getting some traction in his life, and he's generally getting somewhere with his music. He was even well-known for throwing parties with such famous names as Carton de Plessin, Michael Hartner, Chester A. Uh, Arthur III, Forrest J. Ackerman, Fitzlibier, Cecil E. Nixon, K. 
Kenneth Anger. And if you're wondering who these people are, don't worry, because half of them don't even have a Wikipedia article about them, and the other half have, like, a half a page, and it's nothing really too crazy or interesting. But, I mean, these parties must have been bangers, because they later formed a church uh, known to everyone watching this. The baddest rebels in town. The coolest cats in Coolsville. The Order of the Trapezoid. And I feel like this is a early spaghetti monster joke that fell fat. And I mean, at least the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster is uh, silly enough to get a chuckle out of an Redditor. But Church of the Trapezoid just sounds like something someone really trying to be funny would come up with. And while also sounding highbrow, like, oh, it's it's a trapezoid because it's a metaphysical concept and all that shit. Uh, because, you know, you know, it's just not as funny as Flying Spaghetti Monster. And, uh then he later renamed this group to uh, the Church of Satan, which that's the name that really stuck. Once his church was established, LeVay then began to create sermons for his church as he preached every Friday to the masses and claimed 1966 as the first year of Satan. LeVay then claimed that the church was filled with fanatics, cultists, and weirdos. And that's a straight quote from him, by the way. Uh, he, he only cared about the church because it made him money and he also quoted that he just only cares about the church because it made him money which uh which uh, explains a lot later down the line about ev everybody's caring about this church uh there's only there's only one individual who actually gave a shit about like the church's message and and it doesn't end very well for her imagine making an edgy sign of rebellion and only to profit on it and only to care about the money and then your wife takes it in the divorce Hey Anton, I heard about the divorce. You doing good, man? She, she, she took she took the fucking kids, man. I mean, she took the satanic church. I lost the satanic church in the divorce, man. What the fuck? How do you, how do you take the church of Satan in a divorce? I could imagine the judge like, Hergy, Hergy. Uh, we we're we're arguing over the custody of the church of Satan. This makes how much? Uh, she also filed a restraining order against him during the divorce, which he didn't contest. So I, I don't know much of the lore behind why she filed the restraining order or what he did to merit the restraining order in the divorce. But I could only assume since he didn't contest it, he was caught red handed doing something not very good. But we don't know what it is exactly. So I can't really like say what he did. I just know he probably did something. You know, he was a uh, probably. I, I, if I was gonna throw out a guess, this is just my guess. This is this isn't me like trying to defame him. Probably some like domestic de de abuse or something like that. You know, I can't I can't really come up with anything outside of that. And you know, and after. After losing everything, your wife, your kids, and the church you founded, it might be hard to find love again, but LeVay, however, did find love once again in 1944 with Blanche Barton, who produced his first son, Satan Xerxes Carsony LeVay, and shortly before Satan Xerxes Carsony LeVay's fourth birthday, Antony LeVay did sadly die of pulmonary edema which is a buildup of fluid around like the lungs that affects the heart. I'm not a, I'm not a doctor. I can't really explain what this disease does, but uh, my, my best guess that uh, probably drugs, uh, probably drugs. It probably was the drugs that killed him. You know, it never says anything that he did drugs, but uh, you know, you run a satanic church out of San Francisco and you, you work at bars. You, you probably done some of the uh, nefarious concoctions that is uh san francisco is known for so politically a lot of people don't like to talk about the specific political groups that levey was a member of and i mean if you're part of this man's lineage you'd probably want to talk about the better things about him however i found a book called black sun airing cultus esteratic nazism and the politics of identity which actually references levey a couple of times um, LeVay was a member of the National Renaissance Party and sought to create a merge of fascism and Satanism. This part of his church never really took off, and later later in the history of the Church of Satan, it's become more of a left-leaning political ideology rather than the right-leaning anarchist political ideology that LeVay had supposedly intentionally wanted. So, 
The Church of Satan's Twitter uh, claims that this was false and made up by Wikipedia. However, in the book, The Black Sun, Aryan Cultists and Stoic Nazisms and the Politics of Identity, it claims the contrary. And what we do know is that James Madol, the leader of the National Renaissance Party, was known to be a close friend of LaVey. <coughs> so close, in fact, that he would oftentimes have regular wi visits with LaVey. In quote, James Wagner, a former security echelon commander, recalls that relations between the NRP and the Church of Satan, founded in 1966 by Anton Sazenor LeVay, were cordial. Uh, Madol and LeVay frequently met at the NRP office and in the Warlock Bush in the War Warlock Bookshop, that's a tongue twister right there, in New York. Maldor is said to have erected a large satanic altar in his apartment, and Wagner has confirmed that this image of Baphomet, the Sabic goat, hung there, and that Madol played LeVay's recording of the satanic mass in several NRP meetings. One NRP bulletin shows a picture of Madol and an SE trooper with the high priest of the Temple of Baal and some female acomoites in their temple. Seth Kill Ploth, the NRP Michigan State Organizer, formed the Satanic Order of the Black Ram with some other NRP members to celebrate the ancient religious rites of the Aryan race. That's a lot of words. Uh, I later want to actually do a whole video revolving around this entire book because it, it's got a lot of very interesting stuff, but we're not going to be talking about this book. But we do have a video where LeVay performs a satanic ritual that he inherited from, in his words, Windai Election Vorstippel, which was a satanic ritual performed in Nazi Germany, uh, Korea 1932 to 1935, by, in his words, the intellectual element of the budding Scheisterheistdachnischt. The banners and symbols of the time were used an integral part of the decor. Participants were garbed in full dress, whether uniformed or not, and topical music was added usually uh, Margrunt at the beginning of the Unscher Franstein Flatschend und Vorhan as a closing anthem. If I if anybody is watching who understands German, uh, you're probably cringing at me trying to pronounce these. These were played by the organist on a gramophone. Music by Richard Wagner may be used instead of the opening and closing of the ritual. So he does claim that he's performing secret Nazi satanic rituals in his work, and so his appreciation of the ideology is self-admitted to some degree. I mean, he literally said that in the book that the modern Church of Satan actually published, so you, 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 can't, you can't just spin this around and be like, oh no, uh, LeVay, LeVay didn't have any appreciation for the Nazis because he literally just said that he, he's, got, he's got Nazi Satan magic in, in his book. So, does this mean he's a Nazi? I don't think it's enough evidence. He, he, he apparently did get the satanic ritual from a Nazi, and uh, or or not, because he probably made everything up in this book. And yeah, he did like, but he did likely associate with these groups and his side of the party. And there's claim to be an association, but I don't think either of these uh, organize, organizations have ever actually unearthed secret Nazi magic. And you know. A lot of uh, a lot of Nazis actually agreed with LeVay's message back in the days as well. Uh, Nazi Satanism is surely the most extreme example of uh, cultic revival of fascism, and taking their cue from LeVay and Antico, the neo-Nazi groups combined satanic rituals and magical invocations with Hitler worship and Nazi ideologies. Nazi scientists' attack on Christianity, and even more vehement than its anti-Semitism, retires Nietzschean notions of the Superman and the social Darwinist concern with power. Conquests and the survival of the fittest found an old National Socialist doctrine. So, yeah, um, long story short, 
the Satanists are like, oh, we are the best. We are number one. We're the we're the number Ar one Aryans, and we can do whatever we want. My mom can't tell me that I have to stop jerking off and uh, eating cake all day because I am the Aryan master race. I, I feel like there's some people who unironically talk like this on poll. So let me just say this. You can be a Satanist all you want, but if you if you deny that this shit happens and you're just a fucking poser who can't handle edge outside of your social safe zone, and I want to make it clear I'm not a Nazi and I think their ideology is retarded and I'm a Hispanic myself, but if, if, if you want to claim that the Church of Satan has any moral high ground or try to deny that there's this connection between them, then I'm just hand you this book and... Because it's got a lot more content revolving around the subject and than I care to add in this video. And, you know, you're just, you're just wrong at this point. You, you're just wrong. So after his death, his daughter Zena and her husband Nicholas Schleck published a nine-page fact sheet which basically claimed that LaVey's life story was bullshit. Uh, so let's read over this little fact sheet. I'm one hell of a liar. Most of my adult life I've been accused of being a Charlton pony and an imposter, and I guess that makes me about to as close of what the devil's supposed to be as anyone. It's true, I lied constantly, incessantly, because I lie so often I'd really be full of shit if I didn't keep my mouth shut and my bowels open. Antonio LaVey, Sp Satan Speaks, page 101. The bigger the lie, the more people will believe it. Adolf Hitler, my call. Completed by his daughter Zena and Nicholas Schleck, February 2nd, 1998. And Tor Salazar LaVey, 1930 to 1997, along with Charles Manson, Timothy Leary, and other Masonic pop gurus, was a notorious figure of the 1960s subculture of social experiment as a flamboyant high priest of the Church of Satan and the author of the Satanic Bible. He served as an ideal boogeyman of the sensation-seeking American media of that tumbulous period. His curious celebrity was based largely on a self-created legend. This carefully orchestrated legend may, in the final analysis, be LeVay's most enduring legacy. LeVay disseminated his legend through interviews with journals, personal discussion with his disciples, and two LeVay-appointed autobiographers, apparently ghostwritten by LeVay himself. The first of these, 1974's The Devil's Avenger, created LeVay's associate Berlin Wolf. Established on the fabrications, Wolf had already stretched in his introduction to the Satanic Bible. The second, 1990's Secret Life of a Satanist, credited to Belonky Barton, LeVay's live-in secretary and mother of his son, contracted many of LeVay's own claims in the earlier volume while putting forth new legends for public consumption. As social historians and scholars, occult movements began to study LeVay's life in times in an objective historical context. A wealth of information concerning the man beneath the devil's horns has come to light. This brief checklist is a concise guide to separating the deliberate prevocations from the human to all to human facts for brevity's sake one must one of the most well-known aspects of the legend will be clarified he legend claimed that antor sandazor levey was his genuine birth name reality born howard santon levey sources his birth certificate 411 1913 cook county illinois confirmed by relatives legend Claim her parents were Joseph and Augusta LaVey. His parents were actually Michael and Gertrude LaVey. Sources. His birth certificate, 4-11-1930, Cook County, Illinois, confirmed by ASL's daughter, Zena, and daughter, Carla, according to the entry on ASL's death certificate. Legend. Claim he was introduced to the dark side by his Transylvanian gypsy grandmother, who regulated him... As a child, with supernatural folklore and tales of vampires and werewolves, reality, ASL's grandmother was not Transylvanian, nor of gypsy stock. She was Ukrainian, named Caroline Lubia Parkov Colton. Colton was anglicized from Koltanov. Despite his frequent claims, ASL had no gypsy ancestry. Sources, relatives, including ASL's parents.
Legend. In 1945, the 15-year-old ASL was brought to the ruins of post-war Germany by his uncle, a U.S. Coast Guard officer. There was a teenage ASL was shown the top secret films inspired by the satanic cult lodges and their rituals. ASL claimed that the German rituals in his 1970 to book the satanic rituals were actual transcripts of the filmed rituals he saw as a youth. <laughs> Reality. Young Howard spent the entirety of 1945 in suburban Northern California and never visited Germany at any point in his life. The uncle who claimed who brought him to Germany was incarcerated at McNeil Island Penitentiary for the involvement with Al Capone related criminal activity during 1945 and was never in the armed forces. Allied martial law forbade U.S. citizens from visiting post-war Germany and the German rituals and the satanic rituals were written in extremely poor anglicized German. They are very clearly uncredited adaptions of the short story The Hounds Tandalos by Frank Benclip, Long and H.G. Wells, and famous novel The Island of Dr. Morio. <laughs> Sources, ASL's relatives former to Diane LeVay, Honder Centaur, Talados, The Island of Dr. Morio, The Satanic Rituals, Church of Satan member Rosalind Harm Harmoniker, who translated ASL's rituals into German. <laughs> so even the people who translated his rituals in the German was like, nah. These are just straight up plagiarized. <laughs> he plagiarized a lot of his works, man. Legend. The 15-year-old ASL played a second OB with San Francisco Ballet Orchestra, making him the youngest musician ever to play with the prestigious institution, Reality. There was no Francis... Francisco Ballet Orchestra in 1945. The San Francisco Ballet was accompanied by a local orchestra whose records show that none of these three Orbis was named LeVay or LeVay. Sources, San Francisco's Performing Arts Library and Museum, San Francisco, California. Yeah, yeah, I played, I played in, I played in this band. Oh, really? What's their name? Oh, the San Francisco Orchestra. That's not real. Legend. In 1947, ASL ran away from home and joined the Clyde Betty Circus. The circus employed a 17-year-old as a lion tamer. He then replaced the circus calipi player according to such famous bete acts as the Conius, Harold Asan, and the Christianus. Reality. The volumes of Betty archives show no record of LeVay or LeVay as lion tamer or musician. The Consolius Elizana and Christianus were never Betty performances. They work exclusively for the Wrangling Brothers Circus. Sources. Betty 1947 Route Books, Circus World Museum, Barabo, Wisconsin, Wright SD, page 67, and ASL Relatives. Legend. In 1948, the 18-year-old ASL was engaged to play organ at the Mayan Burlesque Theater in Los Angeles. There he met a young stripper named Marilyn Monroe, with whom he had a passionate love affair, and in the period before her rise to film stardom, according to ASL, Monroe had resorted to stripping to pay her rent. As proof of the relationship with Monroe, ASL later showed visitors a copy of Monroe's famous nude calendar, inscribed, Dear Tony. How many times have you seen this? Love, Marilyn. Reality. ASL never knew Monroe. Monroe's intimate Robert Salazar and Harry Lipton, Monroe's agent in 1948, had exposed and desecrated this tale. Lipton paid Monroe's expenses, including her rent. Paul Valentin, director of the Mayan Theater, had stated that uh, the Mayan was never a burlesque theater and that Neither Monroe or ASL have ever worked in the Mayan in any capacity. Diane LeVay, ASL's former wife, had admitted that she forged the Monroe inscription on the calendar. And ASL's former publicist, Edward Weber, claims ASL admitted that he never knew Monroe. Sources. Diane LeVay, Paul Valentin, Wright SD, page 86, Harry Lipton, Anquino Lipton, Conversation 12182, Robert Salazar, Letty to Antonio de Anquinto, Edward Weber, Interview by Anquinto 6291. Legend. Excel. ASL was exposed to the savagery of the human nature during his stint as a San Francisco police photographer in the early 1950s. Reality. 
San Francisco Police Department past employment records include no Howard LeVay nor Anton LeVay. Frank Morser, who was a SFPD photographer in the early 1950s, said ASL never worked for the department. Sources. The cops. Or sources reality. SFD records. Frank Morser, right SD. So yes, the cops. Legend. ASL studied criminology at San Francisco City College during the Korean War. Reality. SFE has no record of ASL's enrollment at the time. Sources. SFCC records. Right. SD page 68. So yes, he, he also lied about going to college to dodge the draft. Legend. ASL purchased the house at 16... 114 California Street, which would later become the headquarters of the Church of Satan, the infamous Black House, because he discovered the first inscription that it was the former brothel of Barbary Coates, Matern Mammy Pleasant. The house was honeycombed with trapdoors, secret passageways, built by the Pleasant to elude police raids. Reality. 6114 was ASL's parents' home. He, it was never a brothel, nor did Mammy Pleasant ever live or work there. ASL's parents first allowed ASL and his first wife, Carol, to live in this house, and then transferred ownership of it to ASL and his second wife, Diane, in 1971. Such secret passages and hidden rooms uh, that exist were constructed by ASL. Damn, you really fucked up your parents' house and then got lucky and inherited it just so you could say it used to be a brothel. Jesus Christ. And his sources, uh, relatives, San Francisco property records, Michael and Gertrude LeVay and Joint Tennessee Grant Deed, July 9th, 1971. Legend. In the 1950s, ASLs traveled to Nice, France, where he recorded an album of organ music under the pseudonym George Montebella. Reality. ASL's first and only trip to France was in the mid-1970s with his Dutch disciple, Martin Lammers, Amsterdam sex club owner, financed his voyage. The ASL equals Montebella story appeared in 1989 when a global Church of Satan member found a Montebella album and suggested that it was similar to ASL's own music. ASL, never pleased by competition, reported with the prosperous pseudonym claim, which is still arbitrarily supported by his posthumous followers. Sources Diane LeVay, Zenta LeVay. Legend. ASL was the official city organist for San Francisco until 1966, playing for gala events such as government banquets and political meetings. Reality. San Francisco has never had an official city organist, according to ASL's first wife, Carol. His only income was $21.91 a week, and it was generated by a regular engagement of the Lost Weekend, a nightclub where he was the House Wurzeler organist. Source. Julie Burford, Civic Auditorium, San Francisco, California, Right SD, page 68. Carol LeVay's Divorce Proceedings Records, Right SD, page 68. Legend. On the night of April 30th, 1966, the German satanic festival, Watschen Prussenstadt, ASL, in a blinding flash, declared himself the High Priest of Satan, proclaimed that the Age of Satan had begun, and founded the Church of Satan as a religious institution. Reality. In 1966, ASL supplemented his income by presenting a weekend lectures on an exotic and occult topics, and by conducting witches workshops he charged two dollars a head filling his living room with the curious and establishing a local reputation as an eccentric professional publicist edward weber suggested to asl that he would never make any money by lecturing on friday nights for donations and it would be a better to form some sort of church in order to get a charter from the state of Carol, california I told Anton at the time that the press was going to flip out over all this and that they would not get a lot of no notoriety. The summer in 1966, long after the financial founding, Date interviewed later a newspaper article about ASL's lectures, offhandedly referred to him as a priest of the Devil's Church. This mixture of Webster's idea and the newspaper's characterization resulted in the creation of the Church of Satan as a business and publicity vehicle. Jack Webb, a San Francisco police investigator who knew ASL from the Lost Weekend nightclub, also just suggested that he should form a church of some kind of exploit uh, his resonate knowledges. Source. 
Edward Weber, interview by Antico, 6291. Jack Webb, Diane LeVay. Legend. ASL's trademark shaved head was a result of a ceremonial head shaving on April 30, 1966, to formalize his role as the high priest of Satan. This ritual was performed in tradition of the Yezidi devil-worshipping tribes of Iraq, who were said to have carried out a similar ceremony. Reality. ASL shaved his head in the, number, in the summer of 1966 due to a light-hearted desire from his wife. The LeVay look had nothing to do with the Church of Satan and founding, nor any mystical, any mystical meaning attached to it later. Nor did Yazidi Kuala's religious teachers shave their heads. Sources. Diane LeVay, Ethel S. Drower, Peacock Angel, 1941, C.J. Edmonds, A Pilgrimage to Lassid, Royal Society, 1967. I can't read. Legend. In 1966, ASL personally designed the Baphomet emblem of the Church of Satan. He owns the right to the design, claiming it cannot be reproduced without obtaining licenses rights from the Church of Satan. Reality. The Baphomet emblem is used by the Church of Satan was never original to it, nor was it created by ASL. Hence, it cannot be trademarked. The original Baphomet designs were at least as far back as the medieval Knights of Templar. The artwork of the current emblems, goat slash pentagrams, first appear in 1931 Book of Oswell Worth. The complete emblem, uh, with the added circles and the Leviathan Hebrew letters, appears in the cover of the book by Maurice Betsy, two years before the creation of the Church of Satan. Early photos of the church activities often show ASL for his dis disciples using the Bessie book as a photo prop because of its prominent cover, Bahamut, and it, he included that the book in his Compliment Witch Biography. Bahamut, including this rendition of it, was clearly in the public domain. Oswald's worth, Lafran Macarine, Reduzidu, Intelligible, Ses Appetis, Elle, Competition, uh, Paris, uh, uh, the sources on the screen. I'm not reading all these sources anymore. Jesus Christ. Legend. One of ASL's most widely accomplished. One of ASL's most widely accepted falsehoods is his claim that he served as a technical advisor for the 1968 Roman Polosky film, Rosemary's Baby. ASL also claimed to have played the curiously uncredited part of the devil in that film. Reality. ASL had no involvement with the Rosemary's Baby. Polosky's close friend, Jean Gutswatsi, the original producer of the film, stated that there was no technical Goal advisor, nor did ASL even meet Polosky. Producer William Castle, who detains aspects of the film's production in the autobiography, never mentions ASL. He does describe Polosky's diligence in basing the film exactly in the Ara Levin novel, which was adapted, eliminating any need for technical advice. The father of the actress who played Mia Farrow's body double in The Devil Scene recalled that a young, very slender professional dancer played the part dressed in a small rubber suit. In 1971, the suit was acquired by the Studio One Productions in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, for use in a low-budget horror film, Asylum of Satan. Michael Antiquo, technical advisor of that film, examined the suit and concluded that the 200-pound, six-foot-tall ASL could not possibly have worn it. The suit was worn by a girl in the Asylum film. Not a single member of the cast or crew of Rosemary's Baby had ever mentioned ASL's involvement. And in 1968, a San Francisco theater did ask ASL to make an appearance at the film's local opening as a pro emotional event. This appears to have been ASL's only connection with the film that endangered the 1960s popular interest in Satan. Legend. James Manfield, Hollywood sex symbol and actress, was a card-carrying Satanist and had an affair with ASL. Reality. Publicity agent Tori Kent, an associate of Ed Weber, arranged the meeting between Massville and ASL and, as a publicity stunt. ASL was smitten with the actress, Mansfield, who had no secret for her many affairs, denied knowing ASL's intimately, and no associate of hers had ever confirmed or supposed romance with ASL. In a 1967 interview, she asked, he, she said, he has fallen in love with me and wanted to join my life with his. It was a laugh. According to ASL's publicist, Edward Webber, Man 
Hartsfield would ridicule her satanic suitor by calling her Los Angeles home and seductively teasing him while her friends listened on the conversation. ASL's public claims that he had an affair with Mansfield began only after Mansfield's death in an automobile accident, which he also claimed was the result of a curse that he placed on her lover, Sam Brody. Wow, this is fucked up. Imagine getting made fun of by a girl and she's like, Haha, I never date you, actually. You're a fucking loser. And then after she dies, you're like, yeah, I totally fucked her and I put a curse on her boyfriend. That's fucking sad, dude. Bro, what the fuck? Oh, man. I can't be the I can't be the only one who's like, bro, that's cringe, bro. Levey, Levey, stop, Levey, you're being cringe. Stop with the cringe. Legend. ASL wrote the Satanic Bible, his principal work to fulfill his cognition's need for a spiritual guide. Reality. The Satanic Bible was conceived as a commercial vehicle by paperback publisher Anvin Books. Anvin approached ASL for some kind of satanic work to cash in on the satanism and witchcraft fad of the late 1960s. Pressed for material to meet and. To Vin's deadline, ASL resorted to plagiarism, assembling extracts from an obscure 1896 tract, Might is Right by Ragnar uh, Redbeard, into a Book of Satan for the SBA, claiming that the authorship by himself, ironically, these MIR passages are the ones most frequently quoted by ASL disciples. Author third of the SB, colonists of John D's Enochian Keys, taken directly, but again without attribution from alabaster crawley equinox the sb9 satanic sentiments and one of the church of satan's central doctrines is a paraphrase again unacknowledged of the passages of ayn rand's atlas shrugged the last words in the sb yankee rose have been pulled over for years by readers yr is actually the name of an old popular tune in asl's nightclub repertoire Sources, ASL, The Satanic Bible, Ragnar Redbeard, Might is Right, Port Townsend, Lumen Panics, Reprint, 1986, Ayn Rand, Atlas Shrugged, Galt's Speech, and Yankee Rose by Sidney Holton and Abby Frankly. Legend. ASL claimed that at the height of the Church of Satan's popularity, there was hundreds of thousands of formal members. Reality. Diane LaVey, who administered the church as high priestess 1966 to 1984. Michael Ed Aquano, senior manager of the Church of Satan editor of its Cloven Hoof newsletter 1971 to 1975. And Zenta LaVey, high priestess of the church 1985 to 1990, have all affirmed that these figures claimed by ASL were grossly exaggerated. The members of the Church of Satan never exceeded over 300 individuals, several of whom were non-member subscribers to the newsletter or ASL's friends receiving complimentary mailings. Sources, Diane LaVey, Michael A. Aquano, and Zana LaVey. Legend, ASL claimed to be a multimillionaire owning three homes in Northern California, a convent in Italy, and a chateau in France, a fleet of luxury automobiles, and a 185-foot yacht, three salvage ships, and other property. Reality. During Diane LaVey's Heart of Ways, 1988 and 19... 91 lawsuit against ASL. The ASL subsequent 1991 filing for bankruptcy, ASL stipulated under oath that he owned nothing more than 50% of the house his parents had given him, joint, given jointly to him and Diane, along with the personal items he kept therein. ASL's financial years were subsidized by California state aid. Accessories declared the house to be in such poor repair that it had to be nearly worthless in the real estate market. Family members have attested to the fact that by the mid-1970s, LeVay lived in near poverty, frequently having to rely upon ASL's father's generosity. According to other LeVay's relatives, ASL continued to rely on handouts from friends and relatives until the end of his life. Legend. ASL was a close friend of Sammy Davis Jr. and introduced him to the Church of Satan. Reality, Samus Davis Jr. was invited to accept an honorary membership in the Church of Satan by Michael Antiquo. After Davis sent Antiquo his acceptance on March 17, 1973, he was presented with an honorary membership on April 13, 1973 by Antiquo and Qu Laura LeVay alone. ASL did not meet Davis until August 1973. Legend, ASL presented himself as a loving family man. 
Reality. ASL violently beat his wife Diane through their marriage. In 1984, a police report was made describing Diane being strangled into unconsciousness by ASL. Holy shit, I was actually right about like my theory because I'm like, okay, no one no one no one leaves a divorce like this unless they did something bad. And I guess that was actually true according to um according to the San Francisco police records. So yeah. Uh, the founder of the Church of Satan beat his wife and strangled her unconscious. <clears throat> All right. Who was in such a murderous rage that his daughter Carla tried to pull him off of Diane and drag her outside of the house to save her life. ASL routinely physically abused those of his female disciples with whom he had sex, forcing them into prostitution as part of his satanic counseling and collecting their earnings. In 1986, ASL was a passive witness to the sexual molestation of his own grandson by a longtime friend who was later convicted of sex crimes with minors. In 1990, ASL cell informed a mentally ill stalker of his daughter Zena of her whereabouts and the time and location of a public appearance she was scheduled to make, deliberately endangering her life. Sources, San Francisco Police Records of ASL Attack on Diane LeVay, Zena LeVay, Diane LeVay, Stanton LeVay. Okay, I actually, I, god damn, now I gotta do an even deeper dive, cause now I gotta find this. Now I gotta find this fucking police record. Legend. ASL had a deeply affectionate relationship with Togere, his pet lion. Reality. While ASL was always cheerful to portray himself in the public as an actual animal lover in private, he was actually cruel and neglectful to his pets. When he was given Togere as a cub in 1964, he was ill-equipped to deal with such an exotic wild animal despite his pretentious uh, presentations as a circus lion tamer. As Torgi became larger and more unruly, SL frequently losing, used an electric cattle prod to hurt and frighten him into submission. Many animal rights protests, including Torgi's final owner, Tippy Hedron, agree that it was detrimental to the wild animal's development to be raised in a domestic environment. ASL was arrested due to Torgri's unruly behavior, and ASL was ordered to donate him to the San Francisco Zoo. After complying, ASL made only two visits to Torgi. Due to the trauma of his early life, Torgi needed special care at the zoo and uh, at every animal care facility in which he subsequently lived. Sources Jack Kester, Lion Keeper, San Francisco Zoo, Diane LeVay, Zena LeVay, Tippy Hendren. Legend, ASL had a deeply affectionate relationship with his other pets. Reality, in late 1960s, ASL acquired Doberman Pinscher Loki as an accident to his sinister as an accent to his sinister image. ASL never took the time to housebreak or train Loki and regulated him to the overgrown and unkept backyard of the house. Uh, regardless of the weather, if Loki ever tried to slip into the house for shelter, ASL routinely used Torgi's cattle prod on him to terrify him back outside. In his old age, Loki developed such severe arthritis that he could not climb the stairs to the back door to eat. He began wasting away from malnutrition. ASL then gave him one of his to one of his prostitute students, who at least saw that Loki had a warm inside home until he died a few months later. During your young childhood, ASL's daughter Zina once awoke late at night to hear slamming sounds of the shrieking of her German Shepherd puppy. Running downstairs, she saw ASL savagely beating the cowardly cornered dog with a wooden plank. When Zina begged ASL to stop and asked him what he was, uh, what the dog had done to deserve such treatment, ASL screamed, "She wouldn't listen to me. I'm going to force her to obey me." ASL continued beating the dog until her face became covered with blood, then dropped the plank and left the dog quivering in the hallway, so injured and frightened that she wouldn't let Zena come near her. The incident left the dog traumatized for a long time afterwards. Source Diane LaVey, Zena LaVey. So yeah, this is his own this is his own kids talking about what this man's done growing up and uh yeah, yeah, you, 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 you know what? We, we, we don't stand Anton Levay. You know, you know, you know. Fuck this guy, Jesus Christ! How, how could you defend this guy? Like, what the fuck?
there, there's really people who unironically are like, yeah, man, he was he was a cool Satanist, bro. Yeah, man, he did. He, he didn't care about nothing. You know, the church, you know, the the priests, they had they had like a priest molest people. But, you know, Anton LaVey, he, he called it out. He was a real one. Nah, nah man. <laughs> Nah, man, I crossed I cross the line at the pedo shit and beating animals. I'm sorry, bro. And, and, and Anton LaVey, you know, you know, there, there's there's a place in hell for you. And you, you probably were anticipating going there anyways. Jesus fucking Christ. Legend. On ASL's original death certificate, the date of his demise was recorded as October 31st, 1997. Halloween. Reality. An official investigation by the city of Francis. San Francisco determined that ASL's actual date of death was October 29, 1997, and that Halloween date had been illegally written on the document. Sources, his death certificate, Diane Higarthy, or Higarthy, 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 I don't know how to pronounce it, so we're just going to go with Higarthy. Diane Higarthy was born on July 10, 1942, and is a fucking Karen. She's the satanic queen of Karens. Uh, she not only is an agent of Satan, but also won the church in a divorce settlement. And to play the devil's advocate, however, according to what I've read, she's the one who actually made something out of LeVay's writings and was able to actually push it to become successful. And she basically started uh, fucking him because he got a little popular and it made her the bag eventually and she she was the one actually pushing all the books and actually getting everything together and then later when she was done with them she kicked him out of his own church so kind of a girl boss move uh her daughter zena sherrick was uh baptized in the satanic church at age three uh which which goes in contradictory with the satanic church never accepting children as their members um but i i i could also say that oh after LeVay died they don't do that anymore. Uh, I don't know the exact, we don't know the exact time when that rule was established. Later left the church to find her own spiritual path and cut off all ties from her satanic family. And I'm just imagining the parents like finding a Bible under her bed and her mom's just like, I found this under your bed. Do you, do you care to explain yourself? And she's like, it's not a phase, mom. I want to be saved by Jesus Christ. I think there's a calm on, on the on the social medias this. In 1985, when the politically motivated satanic panic in the U.S. led to false accusations of child and animal sacrifice, ritual sexual abuse, and other criminal accusations being directed at the Church of Satan, Zena's father named her as a public representative and high priestess. In the process of defending the Church of Satan from these unfounded claims in the U.S. mass media, Zena's media appearances attracted a new upsurge of membership to the formerly morbid organization, even as she began to question and ultimately reject the self-censored atheist philosophy that she promoted. As she toured the United States on behalf of the Church of Satan, Zena's crisis of faith reached its high point when she learned that most of her father's self-created legend was based on lies, and many of his works were plagiarized. When jealousy and spite motivated Anton LaVey and his administrator, Densley Barton, to actually endanger Zena's life, she could no longer continue to cover up her progenitor's true character and good conscience. This behind-the-scenes tension should be kept in mind when viewing or hearing Zena's interview from time to time. The Black Horse Resource Center was an independent sole proprietorship founded by Zena prior to her leaving the Church of Satan. The Black Horse Research Center was originally the only source which sold these interview compilations or any official Church of Satan products. Zena closed the Black House upon adjudicating from her position as high priestess of the organization. Apologies, I said Black Horse. It's not Black Horse, the comic book publishing. It's Black House. Satanic Sins. Stupidity. The top of the list for the Satanic Sins. The cardinal sin of Satanism. It's too bad that stupidity isn't painful. Ignorance is one thing, but our society thrives on inc increasingly on stupidity. It depends on people going along with whatever they're told. The media promotes a cultivized stupidity as a posture that is not only acceptable, but laughable. Satanists must learn to see through the tricks and cannot afford to be stupid. 
damn i'm sorry guys you know the the, the whole the whole satanic thing you know i thought i thought it was going to be for me i thought it i thought it was going to be able to be the perfect satanist but uh you know you know i'm already i'm already fucking up oh yeah like i i'm guilty of this on the ten commandments but not this but no no i'm already i'm already starting off stupid the posturing can be the most irritating and isn't applying to the cardinal rules of lesser magic on equal footing with the stupidity for what keeps the money in circulation these days everyone's made to feel like a big shot whether they can come up with the goods or not this whole thing is pretentious you've already violated your own rules jesus all right uh solipsism can be very dangerous for satanics Projecting your reactions, responses, and sensibilities onto someone else uh, who is probably far less attuned than you are is a mistake of expecting people to give you the same consideration, courtesy, and respect that you naturally give them. They won't. Instead, Satanists must strive to apply the dictum, do unto others as they would do to you. Its work for most of us requires constant vigilance lest you slip into a comfortable illusion of everyone being like you. As has been said, certain utopias would be ideal in the nation of philosophers, but unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately, from a Michelangelian viewpoint, we are from that point. So, uh, it's a word salad, but basically, um, you're, you're, you're not allowed to call somebody out if they're being disgusting or being gross so i can't i can't be like hey you dog fucker stop fucking that dog pull your dick out right now pull your dick out of that fucking dog it's like no why why, why can't you just let people have fun self-deceit in nine satanic statements but deserves to be repeated here another cardinal sin we must not pay homage to any of the sacred cows presented to us including the roles we are expected to pay, play ourselves the only time deceit should be entered is when it is fun and with awareness but then it is not self-deceit okay so i'm allowed to lie to other people but not to myself heard conformity that's obvious from a satanic stance. It's all right to conform to a person's wishes if it ultimately benefits you, but only fools follow along with the herd, letting an impersonal entity dictate to you. The key is to choose a master wisely instead of being enslaved by the whims of many. So, um, yeah, you're not allowed. You're not allowed to just obey what everyone else is thinking, but you can also specifically pick somebody that you choose to obey. That's fucking lame. So to be cool, I thought we were supposed to be able to do what we want. No gods or kings, no masters. But uh, if uh, the IRS shows up to your house, you better you better fucking bend it over and take it like the little bitch you are, because uh, I'm I'm scared of big tax man. But I'm a hardcore rebel, you know the 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 church is the church is a scam. But the tax man, you better bend your fucking little bussy over. Number six, lack of perspective. Again, this one can lead to a lot of pain for a Satanist. You must never lose sight of what you are and what a treat you can be by your very existence. We're making history right now. Every day, always keep the wider historical and social picture in mind. That is an important key to both lesser and greater magic. See the patterns and fit the things together that you want the pieces to fall into place. So to not be swayed, heard, constraints so not be swayed heard constraints know that you are working on another level entirety from the rest of the world and that the church has ever had and he has kept it in business all of these years number seven forgetfulness of paths orthodoxies be aware that this is one of the keys to brainwashing people into accepting something as new and different, when in reality it's something that was once widely accepted but is now presented in a new package. We are expected to rave around the genius of a creator and forget the original. It makes for a disposable society. Okay, she's just mad that she lost her church. Counterproductive, oh, wait. Counterproductive pride. The first word is important. Pride is great up to the point you begin to throw out the baby with the bathwater. The rule of Satanism is if it works for you, great. When it stops working 
for you, then you've painted yourself into a corner and the only way out is to say, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I wish I could compromise somehow, then do it. I don't understand this that much. So if it works for you, but if you're painted in a corner, so it's like, oh yeah, um, if if nihilism, if nihilism's a if nihilism's ruined your life, then stop. So so it actively it actively admits that being a Satanist can ruin your life, I think. I, I might be stupid, but I, I that that's what I interpreted from that. And number nine, lack of aesthetics. This is a physical application of the balance factor. It is important in lesser magic and should be cultivated. It, it is obvious that no one can collect any money off of it, and most of the time it is discouraged uh, in a consumer society, but is essential satanic tool. It must be applied for magical effectiveness. It is not what is supposed to be pleasing, it's what it is. Aesthetics is a highly personal thing, relative to one's own nature. But there are universally pleasing and harmonious configurations that should not be denied. So uh, be goth, even if people are scared of goth, even though uh, Big Titty Goth Girl's been a meme for a while. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to squeeze down here a little bit so yeah, I can center this. We go. All right. The 11 satanic rules of the earth. Number one, do not give an opinion or advice unless you're asked. Hey, man. Hey, um. Hey, hey, man. Uh, I, I really, I really don't think you should be doing that. Um, uh, I really, I really think that what what you're doing right there is a bad idea. And shut the fuck up. I didn't, I didn't ask you, man. What are, you, what, what are you talking about, you stupid idiot? Oh fuck. <laughs> Number two, do not tell your troubles to others unless you are sure they want to hear them. Hey, you, you fucking pussy. Uh, I know I know your wife just died. Your dog just got ran over, but I don't want to hear about it. Wah, wah, wah. Stop fucking crying, bitch. I don't want to hear it. Ooh, hoo, hoo. My wife died. I lost my foot in the war. I don't care. Fuck you. Number three, when in another's lair, show him respect or else... Don't go there. Okay, that's fair. Uh, if if you walk in, if you walk into my room and you pee on my stuff, I will kill you. Number four, if a guest in your lair annoys you, treat him cruelly and without mercy. <laughs> so so if uh if uh if I invite a friend over and he he shows me like a stupid video for the eighth time, I'm gonna beat him with a hammer. <laughs> what if it's what if it's like what if it's like my boss? Or or it's like a relative, and it's like, oh god, I don't want to deal with her, but uh, but the wife's gonna be happy if I'm just nice to her, and it's like, oh no, fuck that, I'm gonna beat my in law with a hammer because because she makes a weird chewing noise. <laughs> Number five, do not make sexual advances unless you are given the mating signal. All right, so my one my one problem with this is is that. Is making the mating signal a sexual advance? And if it is, does that mean I've made a sexual advance without receiving the mating signal? Because someone has to give the original mating signal. Am I just able to generally produce the mating signal to everyone around me and be like, hey, whoever wants it can come take it? Uh, this this needs to be interpreted more. Where are my religious scholars? Where's Windigoon to tell me what this means? Number six, do not take which does not belong to you unless it is a burden on the other person, and he cries out to be relieved. So yeah, don't steal, and don't take something from someone that doesn't belong to you, but you better spot them in the gym. Acknowledge the power of magic. If you have employed it successfully to attain your desires, uh, if you deny the power of magic after having called upon it with success, well, you will lose all that you have obtained. So yeah, uh, this sect actually does believe in like the principles of magic, and isn't 
isn't atheistic with its ideology. They're, they actually do believe there is a magical entity that they can call upon. Number eight, do not complain about anything to which you need not subject yourself. So, uh, psh, uh there, there's a war in the Middle East, psh, but how does this personally affect you, man? Psh, you know, you it, it doesn't personally affect you, so why do you even care? Oh, that guy's baby eating Jim is eating babies? Oh, pff, how, but how does that affect you personally? I mean, you don't have any babies. That's a stupid one. I don't like that one. Zero out of ten. Number nine, do not harm children. Okay, I think we can all universally agree on that. Number ten, do not kill non-human animals unless attacked or for your food. Also a good one, don't just kill animals for no reason. Number eleven, when walking in open territory, bother no one. If someone bothers you, ask him to stop. If he does not stop, destroy him! We've talked about people who were involved with the church and do not like the current church. Now I think it's time for us to read the current church. So, <clears throat> let's start. Welcome to the official website of the Church of Satan, founded on April 30th, 1966 CE, by Anton Sandor LaVey. We are the first above-ground organization in history to be openly dedicated to the acceptance of man's true nature, that of a carnal beast living in a cosmos that is indifferent to our existence. To us, Satan is in the symbol that best suits the nature of we who are carnally by birth, people who feel no battles raging between our thoughts and feelings. We who do not embrace the concept of a soul inspired in a body, he represents pride, liberty, and individualism. Qualities often defined as evil by those who worship external deities who feel that there is a war between their minds and emotions. As Anton LaVey explained in his classic work, The Satanic Bible, man, using his brain, invented all the gods, doing so because of many other species cannot accept or control their personal egos, feelings compelled to conjure up one or multiplicity of characters who can act without hindrance or guilt upon whims and desires. All gods are thus externalized forms, magnifying projections of the true nature of their creators, personifying aspects of the universe or personal temptations, which many of their followers find be troubling. Worshipping any god is thus worshipping by proxies those who have invented that god. Since the Satanist understands that all gods are fiction, instead of bending a knee in worship to or seeking friendship with unity with such mystical entities, he places himself as the center of his own subjective universe in his own highest value. We Satanists are thus our own gods, and as a benefit deities we can offer love to those who deserve it and deliver our wrath within reasonable limits upon those who seek to cause us or that which we cherish harm. Magnus Gilmore's essay, What's the Devil from the Satanic Scriptures, discusses this in greater detail. So uh you you can read the essay. I'm not just gonna I'm not just gonna just fucking read this essay and not commentate on it, but it it pretty much goes over the same stuff we've already been. It goes over the same the same messages that the Church of Satan, if you look at any of their Twitter posts, it's 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 very familiar to what we what we're already familiar with in this Church of Satan's uh apparent ideology. So here on their website, they actually have uh, the previous incantation, the Order of the Trapezoid, which actually goes into a little bit more detail than I had originally assumed. So, what is the Order of the Trapezoid? This is a question frequently asked outside of the passing reference on page 819 of the Satanic Bible. Nothing more is mentioned by the way of explanation. Quite simply, the Order of the Trapezoid was the name of the founding body, the original magical circle. Of the Church of Satan, loosely formed in 1957 as an electric group of savants who met at a strange black house, it soon gained cohesion and by the mid-1960s achieved a reputation as the only thing of its kind extent. Its name was taken from the geometric configuration of the most formidable shape in nature, the epitome of mortician's dominant mass, its insignia constructed of a perfected trapezoid enclosing the inverted pentagram of the Costa Rican diabolic sect Los Hermanos Diablo, two points thrust 
upwards in defiance of heaven, with the lever point down, broken open and split outwards, allowing the evil to enter er, freely. The order of the trapezoid augmented this by opening. Uh, augmented this opening by placing an upwards thrust pitchfork inside. The lines corresponding to the configuration of the pentagon formed inside the entire symbol. The triple six occupied the spaces between the upper points of the pentagram, the whole symbol identically sized trapezoid bearing the likeness of a bat-winged demon designed to perfectly fill the area. These are amulets beginning the warm and photographers prior to the formal inauguration of the Church of Satan. When the Church of Satan was declared in 1930, April or in 30 April 1966, the year one, it was only natural of uh, those who are uh, that those already established members would constitute its governing body. Hence, the Order of the Zap Trapezoid became the official guiding force behind the organization. With the publication of the of Trapezoid and Specimen, or, or with the publication of the Satanic Bible. Intrigue ensured concerning the order of the trapezoid and speculation arose as its exact origins and functions as was to be expected all manner of things sufficed bearing new buzzword trapezoid despite copyright restrictions and first usage no less than a half dozen parasitic occult oriented groups have attempted to appropriate the name much in the manner of the various churches of Satan, musical groups using the name around and ad agencies have had a field day promoting the trapezoid wares. If imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, the order of the trapezoid has certainly arrived. What are the current proposes and directions of the order of the, of the trapezoid? primarily as an acceptable sounding cover for the Church of Satan. It's not secular situations, which our dreaded name might be uh, counterproductive. For all practical purposes, the Order of the Trapezoid is the Church of Satan. Those members of the original group have the unique distinction of compromising our earliest and most influential supporters. So basically, they changed their name. Now we have a history of Peter H. Gilmore, the current representative of the Church of Satan. Magnus Gilmore has represented the Church of Satan since the Satanic Panic of the 1980s, being interviewed on numerous television and radio programs dealing with the topic of Satanism, including appearances of the History Channel, BBC, the Sci-Fi Channel, Point of Inquiry, and Bob Larson's Christian Radio Show. His audio, video, and print interviews are numerous and continue to grow, making him the most interviewed Satanist in history. In 2001, he was appointed the High Priest of the Church of Satan by Majoris Balanci Barton. Gilmore studied music composition at New York University, where he earned a, a B.H. and M.A. degrees. Bachelor's and Master's, I don't know why I couldn't pronounce that. Uh, his solo album, Trinity for Humanity, presents the orchestra orchestral styled electronic music composed and performed by Gilmore. His book, The Satanic Scriptures, was published in 2007 and is currently available in a number of translations. So when I go over to his Wikipedia page, he hasn't really done anything too crazy with it. I mean, it's not even like a full page length. Um, pretty much he just inherited the Church of Satan and runs the Twitter page and um, a lot of what he does is backpedaling some of uh, uh some of uh LeVay's more controversial views and he'll he'll try to be like oh no LeVay didn't LeVay didn't believe in this controversial thing or LeVay didn't do this bad thing in life he 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 wants the church of satan to keep going and to keep collecting money but he also doesn't want people to realize like how much fucked up stuff has happened in it so right away, when I'm going into like the history panel of the Church of Satan, there there is a lot that's been left out, according to Zena's testimony against the Church of Satan. And Zena's not even mentioned. I don't think I've found one reference of Zena's existence within their actual website. So it's very interesting that they don't even acknowledge any criticisms that she's had or knock down any of the criticisms that she's created or created counter sources to what she's saying because i've seen a couple of twitter spats where people will actually bring up uh some of her accusations and really the best that they have is oh it's just made up by the satanic panic so going over the frequently asked questions i think it's fair to uh 
be able to answer some of the questions that uh, on the Church of Satan's point of view. So we're going to go through their little list of frequently asked questions and I'll give some commentary, I'll compare and contrast it with some of the other evidence that we've found, and so forth. So, where's the Church of Satan on the internet? Church of Satan will never approach anyone and solicit membership. We will never send you direct messages on any platform, and we do not use WhatsApp. We have received reports of scammers claiming to be agents or local representatives asking for membership fees or paid services to help facilitate membership. If someone contacts you claiming to be associated with us or offering any such services, this is fraud and those accounts should be blocked and reported immediately. Any profile other than what is listed here should be considered fraudulent. And then there's like a list of their little social media pages. So that's that's straightforward i can't i can't argue the what's your social media page oh here it is i want to engage in a dialogue with the representative of church and learn about it how do i do that the official website of the church of satan www that uh, the one we're visiting has been established to provide you with all the publicity available free material in which we currently have to offer we do not send any additional information via post mail or email yeah, that's a lot. I am a student or reporter doing research on the Church of Satan. How do I visit you and see your rituals? Answer, a Church of Satan does not have regular services, nor do we have a church buildings for gathering people. So you're a church without the church. Damn. At least LaVey had like a crack house that he was running everything out of. You guys can't even, you guys can't even like do regular rituals. What are, what are people sending you money for? All right, all right, all right. I can't, I can't bust their bells all day. Since our approach is individualists, our members who use ritual do so in chambers that they construct in their own homes, reflecting their own tastes and needs. These are not open to visitation. If you want to understand satanic ritual, read the Satanic Bibles, the Satanic Rituals by Antor Salazar LeVay, Satanic Scriptures by Peter H. Gilmore. So, so, so basically these guys, these guys took over the satanic ritual and then they stopped performing any of the, or these guys took over the satanic church and then they don't perform any of the, any of the performances that the satanic church performs, but they still want people to give them money and people still give them money. Like they're literally getting paid just the shit post on Twitter at this point, And I'm kind of impressed. I'm a student doing a paper on Satanism, and I have questions I will need you to answer. And by the way, this is due tomorrow. Will you help me? <laughs> All right, you know what? Fuck this student. Like, there's a lot more people that I could have asked, and I could have, like, dug into their past with, but I don't actually want to bother any of the people who are involved with this. I just want to make this video, because I could have probably got dug up, like, the uh, San Francisco court case, but I don't want to go and, like, get police records on it. If someone else wants to go for it but i'm not going to i'm not going to actually physically bother someone to get more material on this all right why do satanists worship the devil we don't satanists are atheists yes hmm yes we are so smart see our entire ideology is based on that we don't actually believe in our ideology aren't we genuine aren't we real aren't we just more real than you question do Satanists perform sacrifices? No, we are atheists. The only people who perform sacrifices are those who believe in supernatural being who would consider a sacrifice to be some sort of payment for a request or a form of worship. Since we don't believe in supernatural beings, there is no reason for a Satanist to make a sacrifice of any sort. Oh, thank God nobody's made a sacrifice to Satan and there's no Satanic groups out there that uh, are performing heinous actions. Uh, but if they are, they're not real because they actually believe in it. And we're just make-believe Satans. You know, it, it, it'd, it'd be like, oh, man, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Uh, it's a good thing that uh, we're not the actual Nazis. We're just the neo-Nazi group. And the real Nazis are the bad ones. I've heard Satanism uh, supports, uh, I'm not saying that out loud, and other ways to harm them. How do you justify that? Answer. Sati uh, Satanism has strong rules prohibiting activity with that non-human animals and in fact if a church of satan member abuses children otherwise his membership is automatically terminated 
Then explain LaVey's divorce reason. Explain the San Francisco court documents. Oh, wait. Are do you saying that never happened? Because, you know, she filed a restraining order on him and he just didn't question it because he probably didn't want the fucking cops to, you know, investigate what he was actually doing to kids. And a lot of this, a lot of this is the same. Is Satanism doing this bad thing? Uh, no, no, we've never done this bad thing. Even though the San Francisco police reports say that until that LaVey did a whole bunch of really bad stuff. What is theistic Satanism? There is no such thing. People who believe in some sort of devilish supernatural being and worship him are devil worshippers, not Satanists. That's the same fucking thing, you retard. <laughs> Antonio LaVey was the first to define Satanism as a philosophy. I'm pretty sure there's people who refer to themselves as Satanists who perform satanic rituals because I actually knew, knew a Satanist who wanted space to be able to perform his satanic rituals. So this is just wrong. Question, isn't LaVey Satanism just plagiarized from other sources? Well, LaVey refers to an idea, a concept, or quote delivered or taken from somewhere else. He often cites the author, either in the paragraph or the indexes of his books. If anything, LaVey wrote seems similar to past concepts. Oftentimes, he augmented it with modern circumstances as well as his own thoughts. Seeing that, say, so he plagiarized it, but he he changed he changed a couple of words. So you know, if I if I take the Lord of the Rings and instead of a instead of a glowing blue sword, I give him a laser gun. It's you know, it's uh it's my original works now, and I can publish it and make the money and still call it the Lord of the the Lord of the Cyber Chip. No, it's it's plagiarized. How many members does the Church of Satan have? Our founder established as a policy that we would never give out a precise count of our members and would allow people to quantify us. He also said that the Church of Satan should be like a cursed witch that can't be nailed to a wall. He felt that if our numbers were judged to be too large, people might find it threatening, and if too small, it might be used as a reason to dismiss our philosophy. It's probably, it's probably, they probably got like, a fucking a hundred plus donators and people are like oh this this is fucking tiny it, it's just a bunch of edge shorts following them on twitter they probably don't have that serious of a following if you think about it because how many people do you think are actively giving these people money every month i'm friends with a hentai artist and i'm pretty sure that he has a bigger patreon pool than these guys are there other satanic organizations which you endorse that might be local to me Answer. The Church of Satan itself would be the only valid organization whose goal is the dissemination of the philosophy of Antor Sandor LeVay. One can join regardless of the nation of residence so long as one is legally an adult. We do not endorse any organization and must warn you about any pseudo-satanic organizations out there. Satanic bunko sheet. Also, this essay by our current high priestess Magnus H. Magnus Peter H. Gilmore explains our views about much that you might encounter while researching Satanism on the line. What is the Satanic Temple? The Satanic Temple is a self-described yes men satire activist group that uses Satanic theme imagery and language to get media and public attention. It's true that the Temple is, uh, of Set is related to the Church of Satan. In 1975, the Temple of Set was founded by Michael Antiquo, who recently resigned from the Church of Satan. He believed it was a communication with the supernatural entity set and left behind the atheism-based Church of Satan, along with a few other CS members, to follow a theistic path that they call Satanism. It's my original, it's my original religion, Satanism. We actually follow the devil, okay? I'm not Satan. I'm my original character, blatant. And I'm not ball. I'm my original character, b ball. How can I find a local chapter or grotto of the Church of Satan? We do not have chapters and our grottos were disbanded as being unnecessary. Our organization does not have church buildings as that would be against our individual approach to living. Originally, Anton LaVey used his home as a headquarters for our church and performed rituals there. But he stopped that fairly early and members began to make their own places for rituals in their house. We are a worldwide organization and our central administrative office is currently in the Hudson Valley. We do not 
we are, it is not open to visitors. Each of our members who enjoy using ritual create personal ritual chambers in the home, thus suiting the tastes and needs for, of the person or persons using such spaces. All right. So basically, they're like, damn, this Church of Satan thing's going under. Nobody wants to be a Satanist anymore. Let's sell all the real estate properties and uh, and uh, just try to collect donations off of the Internet. Why is there a membership fee? You don't have to join our organization to consider yourself a Satanist. You only need to recognize yourself in the Satanic Bible and live according to the tenets outlined therein. We do not ask people to join. That is your prerogative. We simply supply the information that explains how you can affiliate if you choose. A registration fee was established by Anton Ray himself, and this is for lifetime membership. Many ch Christian churches charge you a tie that costs counts for 10% of your yearly income. So, so wait a minute. You're the only satanic church, according to your words, and in order to be an official member, you have to pay. But they're like, oh, but, but Christian churches do it too. And it's like, I have never been in a Christian church that like demanded money. Like they have the little whisker basket where they're like, oh, can you donate? But I've never had it where they're like, oh, you can't participate unless you uh, paid us. And LeVay charged people $2 to go to his little like Friday night um, mass. So in reality, the Church of Satan is a lot more pressuring with how much money they're charging people to be a member. But you guys don't even do the masses anymore. So you guys are just taking money from people without producing anything for them at least levey put on like some little weird show for people you satanists use inverted crosses as a reverse cross is often seen by christians as symbolic of saint peter since legend states that he was crucified upside down at his own request by the romans and thus can only serve as a symbolic of the office of the pope of the roman catholic church literature has long depicted anyone who has embraced satan and thus rejected jesus as having embraced the reverse cross as symbolic of the act satanists are free to employ any symbols which they feel have renaissance so such as an upside down cross has personal meaning they could use it so so they're basically like, yeah, you could be wrong, but I'm not going to stop you from being wrong. My partner and I want to have a satanic wedding. How can we do that? Satanic weddings by our priesthood are available to members of the Church of Satan, and only if there is a member of the priesthood interested in doing it with a couple within a uh, traveling distance. Being Satanist or priesthood is under no obligation to other members. We may consider requests for an efficient, but not my partner and I want to have a satanic wedding. How can we do that? Satanic weddings by our priesthood are available to members of the Church of Satan, and officially there is a and only if there is a member of the priesthood interested in doing it for the couple within traveling distance. Being Satanists, our priesthood is under no obligation to other members. We may consider requests for an efficient by non-members. Damn, so it's like, yeah, I'll, I'll do I'll do your wedding if it's convenient to me. Like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fly anywhere and I'm not gonna drive anywhere like longer than an hour, but uh yeah, you, you can do it you can do it if it's if it's convenient. Uh, where where the Catholic Church would probably be like, oh, you're going to this island? Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll get a priest out there. We'll we'll send a we'll send a priest. You just got you just got to like handle the flying him over there and all that. Generally, we suggest member couples first legalize their wedding through local authorities, civil ceremonies are brief and non-religious, they may either create their own ceremony or use one which we use, authorized by Match St. Peter Gilmore and release in the Satanic Scriptures, and choose someone they both respect to be their celebrant. Or they may create a ceremony in which couple marries themselves, each being co-celebrant. So it's like, yeah, um, you know, we, 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 we have no authority in anything. Just do whatever you want. Give us money. Uh, we might send a priest there, but you, you could just do it yourself. Like this organization just has nothing to it. They just they just want to jerk off all day. Do you perform weddings for same sex couples? Yes. However, the legality of such ceremonies will depend upon local laws. See this essay on the topic. Oh, damn. Damn. So it's like, oh, yes, we we truly believe in your uh. We truly believe in you having same-sex couples, and we will fight to the death to support you. Unless it actually consists of fighting to support you. Because if you're trying to be a gay couple in somewhere in the Middle East where they don't support that, well, you're shit out of luck. If I join the Church of Satan, will I become rich and famous and have sex with anyone I desire? Answer. No. Damn. 
you know you know i was i was about to be uh buying into it but you know now 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 it, what, what's the point what can the church of satan do for me nothing question have you heard about jesus yes and we find his philosophy to be servile and counter to human nature we do not believe in this mythical figure and caution you to keep your beliefs in his legends to yourself <laughs> oh you, you better you better shut up about jesus <laughs> all right I'm, I'm cautioning you <laughs> jesus christ um also, Jesus, Jesus is very well recognized to have existed. There are there are multiple people who have attested to have known Jesus. So these these people are not only like your run of the mill like internet atheists. They're also the like people who just don't understand the history of that time period, and they're just like, yeah, Jesus Jesus never existed. All right, here's the spicy ones that I've been wanting to get into. Frequently asked questions: drug abuse. Does the Church of Satan endorse all kinds of hedonism, including drug use? No. The Church of Satan's philosophy is epicurean and not hedonistic. For us, balance and controlling seeking pleasures is our goal, indulgence and not compilation, as would be the case under hedonism. For detailed explanation of our policy about drug use, please read this essay, The Church of Satan's Policy on Drug Use. Bro, how am I how am I gonna be a part of a satanic cult and they don't even have like coke on the table for me? Like like what kind of shitty satanic cult are you guys running? Okay. You know, uh, LeVay was like an animal abuser and child toucher, but at least he probably was ripping fat lines of coke with his uh with his groups of savants in the council of the trapezoid. I mean, you know, if that man's throwing parties in San Francisco, don't you fucking lie to me and say there wasn't drugs there. Now it's time for me to explain the most important aspect of the church itself. No, the church is complete without a Bible, and no Bible is complete without being very long. So the Satanic Bible starts with its publisher trying to play defense and explain what the fuck you're about to read, and it's really not important because I care more about the words of Anton himself. The Book of Satan is then formatted in a manner that you would expect to see the Bible to be formatted into. It does not, however, utilize the column style print that you would typically see in a Bible or any historical writing organized within a scroll. But it's but it breaks into chapters and sections like in the Bible. Then after about five chapters, the system of writing, uh, he gets bored with it and he just starts writing paragraphs. And I think that's also partly where the plagiarism started. I assume that the first five chapters was his original writing, and he couldn't edit the plagiarized work into the same format, so he ditched the scroll writing style and just started typing it all into paragraphs. So to get a feel of how this how this thing whole thing goes, because I'm pretty much going to paraphrase a lot of it and summarize a lot of it, because I'm not going to sit here and read a read like a hundred page thing for you guys. Here's a transcript of his writing that I also feel is original because of how cringe it is. Wanted, God, dead or alive. It is a popular misconception that the Satanist does not believe in God. The concept of God, as interpreted by man, has been varied throughout the ages, that the Satanist simply accepts the definition which suits him best. Man has always created his gods, rather than his gods creating him. God is, to some begin, to others terrifying. To the Satanist, God, by whatever name he is called, or by no name at all, is seen by a balancing factor in nature, and not being concerned with suffering. The powerful force which permits and balances the universe is far too impersonal to care about the happiness or misery of flesh and blood creatures on this ball of dirt upon which we live. This is also a weird indication that seems to break in the new paragraphs halfway through his sentences for some reason. Um, in this section, he also references that Lucifer was originally a Roman god adopted by Christians, but that's also wrong too because L Lucifer is a Roman god and the fallen angel in Christian lore is also called U Lucifer. But this is not like a religious overlap, but instead a language overlap. Both Lucifer in the Bible and in the Roman Pantheon, in their own respective languages, are called the Morning Star. And later in the completion of the Christian Bible into Latin, the name Lucifer is what the original name was translated into. Then he makes a few paragraphs about how religion is evil and how Satanism will aid you into a better life somehow, and this and that and a bunch of shit that everybody already knows about if they're starting to get into Satanism. He then goes into satanic sexuality as a concept and describes the free love and open nature of sex as a Satanist. Satanic sex. Much controversy has arisen over the satanic views on free love. It is often assumed that sexual activity is the most important factor of the satanic religion and that willingness to participate in sex orgies is a prerequisite for becoming a Satanist. 
Nothing can be farther from the truth. In fact, opportunists who have no deeper interest in Satanism than merely the sexual aspects are empathetically discouraged. <clears throat> Satanism does advocate sexual freedom, but only in the true sense of the word. Free love in the satanic concept means exactly that. Freedom to either be faithful to one person or indulging your sexual desires with as many as you feel necessary to satisfy your particular needs. So yes, go cheat on your wife like Anton. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder how that played out for him. He also states... It is an established fact that the nymphomaniac, every man's dream girl, and heroine of all lurid novels is not sexually free, but is actually frigid and revolves and roves from man to man because she is too inhibited to ever find complete sexual release. Guys, you don't understand. I need to get cream pied by random men. He then also claims that Satan condones any and every type of sexual activity, including transvestism, satanism, masochism, urolingia, expositionism, and luckily there's no mention of vor and furries in there. And luckily, also, there is a plus side of this book. He claims that satanism does not advocate uh, forced cuddling. Y you know what I'm talking about. Young cuddling, animal cuddling, or any form of cuddling which entails the participation of those who are unwilling or those whose innocence or naive would allow them to be intimidated and misguided into doing something against their wishes. So yes, I think I think everyone in every society uh, can agree to that. And also, I would, I, I would have ended that statement right there, but there is a confession of these actions being performed in a video that he published on something weird video, and I'll, I'll just, I'll just, uh, I'll just play the video right here. Sordid tales of pederasty. And the boys used to spend Saturday mornings and sometimes Saturday afternoons as they were growing up, um, playing with themselves and getting a hard on and measuring it and see who had the longest one that week and seeing how far they could be across the road. And then they would masturbate and see who could do the most, <laughs> you know, all that type. Bestiality. And yes, in that second part, uh, uh, there, there's there's some lady with a snake. I I don't know if they're just having it there for shock value, but it's it it's a little sus, man. It's it's a little sus. After all the weird sex stuff, he goes into detail about vampires. Psychic vampires are individuals who drain others of their vital energy. This type of person can be found in all avenues of society. They fill no useful purpose in their lives and are neither love objects nor true friends, yet we feel responsible to psychic vampires without knowing why. That's a metaphor for him wanting this is a metaphor for his parents wanting them to do something with his life besides sitting around the house masturbating. And there's also a section about human sacrifice where the person is not actually sacrificed and is instead hexed and mentally destroyed. And he also states that you're not to sacrifice animals or babies in a ritual. So that's pretty good. And the second half of the book goes like in depth into rituals and how they're performed and the history behind them. But I'm going to save that for another video because uh, I need more concurrent viewers and this video is already too fucking long. So, in conclusion, what can we say about the Church of Satan? The Church of Satan, created by Anton LaVey, um, was kind of like his edgy poetry until some chick picked it up for him and then decided that she could actually make some good money on it. And then she gave it to another guy. And that guy basically made it a lame version of what it used to be. I mean, it at least used to be edgy and they at least used to do illegal shit. Um, but now, but now he's like, oh, I don't, I don't want to get in, I don't want to get into trouble, I don't want to get arrested, so I'm just gonna backpedal all the illegal stuff that we've been doing and just claim we've never done any of that, and uh, and uh, close down all the real estate that we own and just take all the money that I can off of the website. So the Church of Satan, they're not really as edgy as they claim to be. In all honesty, I thought, I thought it was gonna be like, I thought it was gonna be way more crazy, but really, it's just like some really fucking some drug some drug addict in fucking San Francisco who beat his kids and pe people for some reason follow him that's going to be that's going to be the end of this one uh don't forget the like comment and subscribe if i missed anything uh you can point it out in the comments i'll probably add it into a future video uh if you want me to go over some of the other churches lore um 
comment that as well. I might make a second video revolving this topic, but this video is already stretching on long enough, and I only have enough patience for so much of the Church of Satan. And I love you guys. Uh, God bless, and uh, give, give me a give me a fucking kiss. Yeah.